I was born and raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Went to OLPH, Notre Dame High School, and of course the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. I, I'm very proud of being from here. Everything that I learned, I learned here. You know, I have people help me every step of the way, and my dream was to be an actor, also a basketball player. Leon Ford let me walk on the team, was involved with the athletic department, entertainment chairman of the school, from a lot of things outside of the classroom in addition to in the classroom. So I, I, I'm grateful for all my Chattanooga roots, and I claim it very proudly. I have a lot of good memories. I, you know, I, I don't know where to start. I mean, I just love the city. I, I've, I've always had a good time here. I've, I've never really been part of a clique or a group, but when I got here, my friend Bill Landry was playing football here, and he says, hey man, you should check out the drama department. I know you like acting, it's really, and my basketball coach, Leon Ford, was my advisor, and he put me in a theater course. I remember the, the Claude Kipnis mime troupe came through, and our theater was the old men's gym. We were building this building, and we weren't ready. And the Kipnis Mind Troop came in and helped us hang lights, helped to get the gritting, and, and we eventually got it. So I'm sitting backstage. I'm sitting there with a member of the troop. And she said, are you a theater major? I said, no, but I really like it. And she said, then why aren't you? And I couldn't answer her. And I became a theater major, and the rest is history. Now, I was entertainment chairman of the school, getting to go to a convention is another great memory. Great time. But I was putting off chasing acting because it scared me. And I eventually got my equity card, which led to my SAG card. Which I got the very first Dukes of Hazard, And then I left from here in 1980, with my car packed to the brim, uh, on a ham radio with my dad talking until I couldn't hear him anymore, and uh, went to California. Zachary, if I hear anything about exploding chalk, super glue on the chairs, or sneezing powder in the erasers, I'm coming after you. <laughs> Sir, that's so unfair. I'm the principal. I can be unfair. <laughs> I have Chattanooga in my heart as my home. I have been living in California. I tell people I've been visiting L.A. since 1980. But it's where my clothes are, it's where I sleep, it's where I get my mail, but Chattanooga still feels like it's here. But the opportunities for me to perform are really there. So I need to live there and I come visit here. I don't know, I don't want to ever be done. And as much as I love Chattanooga, if I come back here, there aren't many acting opportunities here. So I would have to feel like I had stopped. And I'm not about giving up, you know, as much as I love Chattanooga, and I'll come here a lot and I'll claim it and I'll come to the games and support educators and everything else. I, I think I'll probably still be living in California. And if, if people think I have two homes and a car and stuff like that. Listen, we didn't make a lot of money, but I did what I love to do. And somehow I lived the, the lesson I try to pass along, do what you love to do. And if you can live on it, that's great. A lot better than just making money. It doesn't make you happy, right? Going on here. I, I really love what I do, and I love this, and, I, and I'm very grateful that you guys are, are having these scripts here because I, my scripts are in storage, so why not let them be out and be seen and, and, and live and breathe, you know? Yeah, I'm donating uh, all of my personal Saved by the Bell scripts to the university, but I didn't just say, hey, you want my scripts? I'm having a conversation with Dr. Obear, Fred Obear, former chancellor, and he said, hey, there's going to be a wonderful new library opening up. He was, he's always tell me about great things about school whenever I come back, and I'll come back for a quick visit. And I don't know why, but I, I had all my scripts in storage, and I said, you think they like my scripts? He said, you know, that might be a bad idea. And he came to you and said, are you interested? And you said, yes. And here we are two years later because it was so hard for me to let go of these scripts. They're my scripts, my notes for each episode that I made. That Walk down this hallway, turn here, okay, this is the emotion here, and, and, and every script turned into an episode. So there's uh, the Miss Blisses and the Saved by the Bells, and they're all mine from that stage experience, and, and I hope that everybody can see. I was in the, uh, the theater department here. If I can do it, because I was not the best, then anybody can do it. And you can see how the show went from page to the stage, so to speak, because Teresa Licka, who's here, the dean of the library, uh, has also gotten DVDs. So you can see the finished product and see how it started. And I want them to enjoy that personal connection with the show, with something special that's only here in Chattanooga. 
You know, it's not just my home, it's our home. The school isn't my school, it's our school. You know, I mean, I still claim it as my school, even though I'm 64 years old. You know, I mean, there's students here that 18, 19, 20, whatever, it's their school now, you know. So here's something here that at their age, I had hopes and dreams. And I want them to know, here's the end result so far. I'm still acting. I did Mad Men and a bunch of other stuff. But this is what my big claim to fame is or what people know me as. And if I can do this, they can do this. So I want them to enjoy it. And I want them to realize that somebody from here was part of that and that if somebody else can do it, that they can do it. That's what I'd like. I tell, I, I've been to a lot of schools giving uh, motivational speeches. And I say to people, here's a radical concept. How many of you have a dream? And I ask them, raise your hands. How many of you have a dream? I said, I'm going to suggest something to you that you might not have thought of. Try it. And here at the university, here at any university, they encourage you to try other things. You might have a course of study. Maybe your parents want you to be a doctor. I don't know. Maybe you want to be a writer on the student newspaper, the Echo. You know, maybe you want to be part of the athletic department and see what it's like to produce a game or to get things going or, or be an intern or something like that. They will accept you if you show you care. And I started here wanting to be an actor. You know, I was afraid of it, but I was encouraged and included in a lot of things, from music to everything else. And I want them to know that if they try it, they might find out that they could do that. And if you can make a living doing what you love to do, why not do that? I, I just want everybody to know that I'm grateful for many of the things that have happened to me. You know, in the last five years, I lost my mom and my dad, and, and I understand a lot of people lose their parents and family. And so a lot of things have impacted me in a way. My health had some issues, and I've since done stuff to turn that back around, and get my weight down, and refocus. And you just have to stay focused, and, and a lot of that has to do with gratitude. You're not owed anything you are granted things that you earn it may look like some you can't be focused on somebody else's success oh wow why did they get this job why are they successful you, you can't do that just be the best you you can be and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to be the best me i can be and give back along the way if i can and still really pursue my i'm pursuing my career 100 percent i'm still there's somebody said well are you retired no that word doesn't exist for me. Shoot, uh, Don Amici was in trading places in his 80s. You know, so uh, I hope to keep doing this until it's over.